a lot of times people uh, equate Jake 80 with kicking, punching, trapping, grappling. Trapping range, in my mind, doesn't really exist. Okay, let me explain what I mean by that. Uh, I'll bring Robert out here for a second. Traditional trapping in JKD, we'd have a reference point, and I would trap and hit, okay, or I would strike and hit. This range right here, and then he does some kind of block from there, and I have to counter trap. This range, this doesn't happen in a fight, okay? If I ever fought a guy that was a front hand blocker, I would just knock him out with boxing. I wouldn't need to move that hand. Um, in karate, when, in, if you watch the progression of full contact kickboxing or karate, which started in the late 60s, karate guys tried to do it, and then they, they, a couple boxers said, hey, I can do that because it's full contact. They went in and knocked everybody out, and all the karate guys got knocked out. So then they had to go learn boxing. And you had some guys that did some boxing, like Joe Lewis and uh, Bill Wallace, had boxing hands and uh, the kicks and strikes of karate, and they fought, and that evolved. You don't see this in full contact kickboxing, in Muay Thai, in uh, boxing, in volley tudo, in the UFC, in no holds barred. You don't see people do this. Uh, that should tell you something. What it tells you is it doesn't work, and if you meet a guy that's going to do this to you, punch him in the face. Okay. So in reality, at this range, what's going to happen, when you do, let's just talk about if we were doing a chi sao range, which is basically the distance of the arms here, with the arms bent, this is where you get punched. So if you actually spar, and you really fight, what you find out is at this range, this is where you're going to get hit, this is where you're going to get elbowed, this is where you're going to get knee. So what happens is you're either going to be on the giving end of that, uh, of that exchange. I'm going to be giving Robert my punches and my knees, or you're going to be wanting to grab the guy. Okay? Whether you have sticks, and you're stick fighting, or you're punching, or you're street fighting, nobody stands out here for a minute, minute and a half, and exchanges blows, unless they're stupid. They're going to grab you. So really, in a real fight, I'll tell you what happens. For those of you who are going to see me that have already done it, you know, duh, this is true. And for those of you that haven't, maybe this will offend you. It doesn't matter because it's true. Because in a real fight, what happens is you'll be out here. You'll play your game out here, which is where kickboxing dominates. And then you'll be right here. And if you strike, it'll be here for a moment. And then it'll be here again. And then it'll be here and then it'll be here again, or it'll be on the ground. And that's what real fights look like. So for us, we train the boxing and the kickboxing and the elbows and the knees, and then we train more here. The range for us, when I talk about clinch, is a little closer than you might equate trapping. You can try hand trapping here. It doesn't exist. If I'm elbowing him in the face and he puts a barrier up, yes, I can just slap the arm down out of the way and elbow him again. I don't need a name for it. I don't need to call it a pox hour or a lops hour. You just need to be able to do it. And if you're pummeling and you're sparring and the guy blocks and you slap the arm out of the way and you hit him in the face, that's great. You just slap the arm out of the way. You'll learn how to do that when you pummel. You don't need to have a drill where you practice slapping arms out of the way. And you'll figure that out pretty quick. Okay, what you need to practice is hitting the guy. And then if he does put the arm, then you move it out of the way and just strike him again. From this range, out of the pummel, out of the clinch. So you'll see everything's closer. Now, if you don't believe me, don't take my word for it anyway. Try it. And the trapping is done in a dead pattern against a static position. And it's, th it's all about static positions. The guy puts his hand here, you do one thing. He puts his hand here, you do another thing. He puts his hand here, you do another thing. That's not alive. That's very different from McGreco when you're pummeling and you're going off the resistance of your opponent and the energy that the guy's giving you. And so that's the point that I'm getting across. Okay? And it's semantic, too, because there's, we spend a huge amount of time in the clinch and in that range throwing elbows and knees and sparring from that position. It's just that we don't do it from a Wing Chun base. We do it from more of a Greco freestyle base because that's what we found works. And it works in sparring, it works in volley tudo, it works in our fights, it works parking lot, it works wherever. Guy can come in and pull it off in sparring, which a lot of people have a hard time doing with some of that contrived, um, you know, multiple pox out trapping stuff. Do you think some of the static that you've been getting over, uh, you know, liking the clinch range so much is a lot of individuals have allocated a lot of resources to trapping and, and they feel intimidated about throwing it away because they can do all these drill patterns and stuff? That's part of it. I mean, people spend 15, people spend 15, 20, 25 years doing a martial art. And then I come to their, their school, okay, and in the course of about an hour and a half, show them that everything they did was bullshit. They're going to have one of two reactions. They're going to say, thank you very much, 
and I wish I had met you 15 years ago and they're going to start doing what I do and with us because I'm not doing it in a, to be an asshole. I'm just trying to show them reality. Or they're going to get mad. And if they get mad, they're going to go into denial because they can't get mad and, and do anything else. They're just going to get mad and come up with all kinds of excuses of why, you know. Work to take a shot there, Sean. Try and get him down. Get out of that position. There we go. Good time. So you don't have to go real hard. Doesn't have to hurt. Okay? Put a little bit of equipment on. You can make a little bit of contact. But you know what? We could do this exact same drill without the equipment. I put the equipment on just to kind of give you a little feel for it. And I've been swimming in this pond that's called JKD for over 10 years. I've gone through that stuff. I know those progressions. I know what I'm talking about when I'm talking about trapping drills and stuff. I'm not somebody that hasn't done that, has only done Greco, and then looks at it and says, well, that won't work. Although I wish I was in a way, because I'm also one of those people, like my friend Bert Richardson, like others, that spent some time on that stuff and wasted it. And so there's, there's like money there, obviously, but I think also it's just ignorance. They don't know how else to train in the clinch range. How else do you do it? They don't know. That's all they've been exposed to, so they teach us taught. You know, we, you have a training partner, you both know what you're doing. We can both play in here and simulate these shots and not go real hard and not hurt each other, okay? And if you want to train realistically for this range, then do that. Why do you need a contrived pattern? Why do Robert and I need to come out here and do some kind of cockamamie scheme like this that's never going to happen in a fight? Nobody's ever going to do that to me in a fight. Nobody's going to come up and attack me with a shuto hand. And sometimes people who are looking for an excuse not to train realistically will say what we do is too brutal, which is ridiculous. Okay? You could do that all day long, every day, and not get hurt. As long as you're training with somebody that's you know, going to be smart, not, not be a jerk, and actually strike, there's no reason why you can't train with progressive resistance and still be alive. Don't, don't misunderstand the message of aliveness with brutality. Okay? You can be alive and not hurt each other. Jiu-Jitsu is alive. Okay? And you don't have to hurt each other to do it. I said if you want to simulate adding those other types of foul tactics, go ahead. That's not really my thing. Okay? And let me explain to you briefly uh, my idea on that. Okay? If you take somebody and you just train them in, let's say, street fighting tactics, okay? So when they clinch, they're constantly working to bite and gouge, okay? But that's all they do. And when they, when they work the stand-up fighting, they're looking to poke the eyes and knee the head. And on the ground, they're just looking to bite and gouge, okay? And you do that for a year. You take somebody else, and for a year, you teach them a combination of boxing, wrestling, and Brazilian jiu-jitsu for 364 days. And then on the 365th day, you say, hey, go like this to poke them in the eye, and this is where you bite. And then you get the two in a fight. Who do you think is going to win? Well, my money's going on the guy that's done the boxing, wrestling, and Brazilian jiu-jitsu. You know why? Because he's going to have the motion, the ability to move around, to land his punches. He's going to know what the pressure is like when somebody else is trying to hit him back. Going to know how to control and move around on the ground. In the clinch, going to know how to stop takedowns. Going to wind up on top. Going to be a lot of things. Okay? A purple belt that knows how to bite and scratch on the ground is a completely different beast from somebody that doesn't know any Brazilian jiu-jitsu and only knows how to pipe bite and, and scratch on the ground. It's a different animal, okay? So what we want to do is work those basics of boxing, wrestling, and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And out of that, if you want to add the foul tactics, by all means, go ahead, okay? That's my attitude on it. But I don't like to be thinking about that kind of thing all the time, biting people, poking their eyes. It's not really my thing, okay? This is fun. It's athletic. It's good for you. Stay in shape. And be healthy. This is a much better way and better mindset in my opinion to have.